the sales pitch for Alpine is basically a way to avoid having to write JavaScript, but still have rich interactions. If we take a look at the components list here, this component list from them gives you a good idea of the kind of stuff people do with Alpine. So stuff like dropdowns, tabs, radio button groups, modals, accordions. There's a lot of paid stuff in here, but, but this is what people are doing with Alpine. This is the kind of thing that traditionally you would need JavaScript for, whether you're building a spa or a multi-page app that just so happens to need a dropdown. One way or the other, you're going to do it with JavaScript. But Alpine is an alternative. So this is kind of what it looks like. And this is kind of my problem with it. So when just going back a little bit, if we go back and look at the, the very front page of Alpine, you know, here's their example. And it looks nice. Okay, we can set data in these strings. And then we can click something to change the data. And like, wow, okay, we can drive rich interactions without writing any JavaScript. And wow, isn't that cool? And then you go actually look at like a real world interaction, a real world component, like their dropdown. And you look at the code and you're like, God damn. <laughs> so this is the problem. Like you've got this, it's like, it is JavaScript, but it's not. And it's like JavaScript that's shoved into these strings. And if you go down here, like this thing here, this is not JavaScript. Like I'm sure it's being interpolated as JavaScript at some point. The problem is how do you lint this? How is this maintainable? You're going to end up with any kind of complicated thing like these drop downs, they're going to end up with all this stuff in these magical strings that is going to be very difficult to lint. I haven't seen anyone like running linters on this. And that's my main conceit here is that when you look at this, like the trivial examples seem nice, but then you get to stuff like this where it's like, how are you going to maintain this, you know? When I'm writing JavaScript, I have access to a whole suite of tools that are amazing at doing static analysis, basically. Static analysis is just like any kind of tools you're running on your code that let you find bugs before they go out to production. So like a linter is like an example of static analysis. You're running it on the code as it exists, not on the result. You know, you're not running tests on it or anything like that. When I'm writing JavaScript, I've got access to Prettier, so I can format all my code. Of course, I have access to ESLint. That's the big one. How do you know if you have a little typo in this giant thing here? I have no idea. You can even use Biome. This is another pretty cool linter that's like split off from another project, but this has a bunch of cool linting that you can do. I've been using this on all my JavaScript now. And let's not even get started on TypeScript. I mean, how you cannot type check Alpine.js. It's not gonna work. There's no way to do it. I'm sorry. And if you're using TypeScript and you're using ESLint, you can also use TypeScript ESLint. And, and that's not even talking about testing. I didn't even get into testing JavaScript. But there's this whole suite of tools that we can use to, if we had implemented this with simple native vanilla JavaScript, we could lint it, we could test it, we could do all this stuff, and it would be a million times more maintainable than this. Another thing that this kind of reminds me of, and I might make some enemies with this, but HTMX, I can kind of take it or leave it. Maybe I'll make a video about it at some point, but it has this kind of sister project called HyperScript, and it's a lot like Alpine. The people that love HTMX really love HTMX, so, you know, I don't want to incur their wrath here, but HyperScript is really not for me. At least Alpine, you know, I think the way that it interpolates this stuff inside of attributes is as actual JavaScript syntax, even though I have no idea how you'd lint or test it. I just couldn't imagine like maintaining a code base that had large amounts of something like this in it. I just don't think that's going to work. Now, it's intended to be sprinkled into the app. So to be fair, you know, you're not 
really supposed to be writing large amounts of stuff in this. If the intention is to have little bits of interaction, then why not do it in JavaScript? Or better yet, do it in TypeScript. And then you get all this tooling on top of that. So, it, you know, if that's the argument of like, well, you're only writing a little bit of this, so the maintainability isn't a problem, then just write it in TypeScript. Stimulus is another one that kind of reminds me of this. I think all of these tools, what they have in common is magic properties. I don't really love tools with magic HTML properties. The alternative is just JavaScript. Just learn JavaScript. You know, at the end of the day, you're going to be a lot better off if you just learn good, vanilla, modern JavaScript. If you want to learn JavaScript, this tutorial is amazing. JavaScript.info. I'm not even sure who maintains it exactly, but it's fantastic. Anyone that I talk to that's like a beginner, this is what I send them to. A lot of JavaScript is not the language that it was like even five years ago. It's got a lot of features. You can do a lot with it. And using vanilla JavaScript, you don't need to use React. You don't need to use Vue. You don't need to use any framework. If all you want is little interactions like dropdowns, you can do that in vanilla JavaScript and you're going to be a lot better off. And of course, once you're done learning JavaScript, you got to learn TypeScript. There's no reason not to use it. Even if you're not going to write a single type, just having a TS config in your project gets you more security, more bugs found. There's no reason not to do it. But if you guys disagree, if you think I'm wrong about Alpine, if I'm being unfair, you know, let me know.